This tutorial is meant to guide students through the use of Kami used by teachers in Google Classroom or other learning management systems. So if we go to classwork inside of a class and a teacher has assigned an assignment, it doesn't have to be in Kami already. It could be any sort of PowerPoint, slideshow, uh, Google Doc, or Word Doc. And what we're going to be able to do is when we click on it, it's going to give us this preview screen. And if your computer doesn't already have Kami on it or your Chromebook hasn't been pushed with the extension, you can go into extensions and into apps and add that extension. But most of our students should have that. So this option should come up. If for some reason there it doesn't come up immediately, there should be a drop down and you should be able to open it with Kami. So I'm going to click that. And as I enter, I'm entering as a student. It is a student account. It is not upgraded. So when this does load, I'm going to have the basic non-free version of Kami. And we're going to go through those tools one by one. Okay, so it took a PowerPoint and it turned it into a PDF. Now, the very first thing that I want to make sure I do before I do any of these tools is go over to the Save button. As a student, you're going to save this to your Google Drive, and it's going to take this PowerPoint now and now save it as a PDF. So I'm going to hit Save, and I'm going to go down to Google Drive, and where it says Create Your Own Copy, I'm going to click that. We're going to hit Allow. We're going to go ahead and give permissions to Kami. So I pick my email address and then hit allow. And now that has saved inside of my Google Drive. And so what you're going to notice now at the top is that inside of Google Drive, they have created a folder for us that says Kami Uploads. It's got my name now in front of what the document was originally titled. So if you go into your Google Drive and you find Kami Uploads and click it, you should see this version and it is a PDF. Now I haven't made any annotations to it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to just show you a couple of them. I'm going to show you the select tool. If we needed to select something on here that we had annotated already, we're going to use these tools. The hand tool is nice because it can move, but you can also do that on the side scroll bar. Um, I'll come back to the select tool and also the select annotation tool in a second. For markups, this is for text highlighter or box highlighter. So for text, you have different colors here. I'm going to keep it with yellow, but this is if you had a highlighter already. For whatever reason, it doesn't want to use it. There it goes. Um, it is if you go over the words, it should highlight it for you. A box highlighter is basically if you want to draw a box around something, it will highlight it. And then you also have strike through and underline it as well. At the bottom, we have the eraser tool. So you can erase all annotations. If you just scroll over that and left click, it will get rid of them. So that's one way to erase. The other thing that we have here is shapes. So we can go ahead and draw shapes if we want we can change the thickness of the line for whatever reason you can change the transparency of your shape so obviously that is a little bit more transparent and then using the select tool we're able to take that move it we're able to reshape it you can see that it is transparent so that we can see what's through it and we can make it bigger or smaller if needed the other thing that we can do is click on that object and what you'll see is Different, ob different choices come up where we can change the color. We can go ahead and change the size. We can change where we move it, and then we can also delete it. So we can just hit that trash can as well. Another way to delete, though, is to go ahead and select all annotations. So if we click this tool right here, and we just draw a box around what we've annotated, we can delete everything in one shot. Students are going to be able to put text onto the a document if they need to and they would just left click once they hit the text tool they can change font size and all of their options for bolding it um, and making it 
whatever they need, a different color, highlight color, uh, text color, and your, your basics of, you have your line height, you have your font size, bold, italic, or underlined. And then students would be able to type. Once they have that type, they can go ahead and they can move it or place it wherever they need. And they can make the box larger or smaller by grabbing those corners. And they can also delete it by hitting this X. And finally, they can draw. There are many different colors that go along with this, so we can draw with it. If you have a stylus, obviously it's gonna be a lot more responsive. If you're gonna do it with a mouse pad or with a mouse, it's gonna be very responsive as well, but it's a little bit tougher to draw, obviously. So if I wanted to go ahead and put the number 100% in there, it's not too bad. Again, if I have markings on here and I realize I made a mistake and I wanna get rid of any everything quickly, I can go ahead and use select annotations, grab it and just hit delete. Once you are finished, you wanna make sure that this is saved and most of the time it will be saving right here. It'll say saved up at the top of any annotations that you make. I'm gonna make one so that we have it for an example. I'm just gonna make some zigzags here. It just saved changes. And if I wanted to, I could hit save right there, but it says three unsaved changes. It is on auto save, so it is saving and it is in my Kami uploads. So if I X out of this, let's see if we can save it one more time. Last saved a minute ago, save now. I'm gonna hit save now. And it just saved for me just a second ago. So I should have all of my annotations there. So if I X out and I wanna take a look at this document, I'm in my Google Drive. And in the preview window, as I scroll and it comes up, my second slide is where I made my annotation. You can see that that annotation is there. I now can go into my Google Classroom. And if I'm a student, I can add that work for my teacher to look at. So that PDF is able to be submitted or uploaded for my teacher, and then I can submit to them. Again, everything that you create in Kami will be in your Kami uploads folder and that's automatically created inside of your Google Drive. So there is one last thing that I wanna make sure that teachers and students understand, that if you have already uploaded a PDF, so it's not a Word document or a Google Doc, it's not a slideshow or a PowerPoint, but it already is a PDF and you're opening it with Kami, it's not going to save it to that Kami uploads folder in your Google Drive it will just save it where it currently is at. But you are able to change that if you want to, and you wanna keep all of your Kami uploads in one place. I'm gonna go ahead and annotate this. So I'm just gonna kind of give some scribbles on top of it. And you can see that in my Google Drive, it's in, in a Kami assignment, and then it has a title. And it is saved there, so that's fine. But if I wanna make sure that I save it to the Kami uploads folder that Kami has created inside of my Google Drive, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna change where this is going to go. So I'm gonna click on the folder. So I'm gonna click move. So I wanna pick the Kami uploads folder and then hit select. And now those changes in that save is, is happening in my Kami upload. So when I go to submit this assignment to my teacher, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I go into my Google Drive. And I can do that obviously through Classroom, but my assignment will all always stay in my Kami upload folder. And there it is right there, second quarter number four equations.